Hi everybody, this is Tanya Pizzolato of Shimmering Tarot. Welcome to my channel. We have three side-by-sides. All three of these decks are by Disney and they're so great for this time of year. They're great for Halloween, Samhain, which are both, you know, about the thinning of the veil and dressing up like uh, goblins and ghouls and things so the spirits don't see you. Let's ring the bell and bring in the lovely energy. But personally, witches, we like to communicate with the other side on the thinning of the veil and a couple days afterwards. So here we have Nightmare Before Christmas, which is Jack Skellington and Sally. The villains which has all the villains from all the Disney uh, stories, and Hocus Pocus Tarot. So let's uh, start looking at them. These are such beautiful decks. Oh, Let's go this way. I like to start with the Major Arcana. So here is our Fool. Jack with zero, his trusty dog, his loyal sidekick. Hercules with some angel and devil. And over here with Hocus Pocus, we have Max Dennison lighting the uh, candle, the black flame candle. So, next here we have the magician about manifesting powers. So we have some of the witches, the voodoo priest dude, and uh, Winifred from Hocus Pocus. Now we move on to the high priestess, our intuition, the secret knowledge we have that we all have access to if we... Uh, concentrate and look inside and Maleficent over here so Sally and Maleficent and for Hocus Pocus we have oh Sarah I think her name was Sarah also in the movie Ah, now the ultimate mother figure, the Empress. She's not only a mother figure, she is Mother Nature. She's all about creativity and giving birth to animals, humans, food, everything. Creative ideas. And over here we have the mother of uh, Max and his sister. Now we have the ultimate father figure, the Aries card, number four, and the tire from the Jungle Book and Santa Claus. I mean, how much more fatherly can you get? And for, and we have the father of Max and his sister here for the Emperor. Now we have the Taurus card, the Hierophant, all about tradition teaching and learning and uh, religion, whatever your religion could be. I mean, all of them, you know. The world's greatest boss the sheep has. And the mayor from Halloween Town. And in Hocus Pocus, we have the book for the hair fent. Oh, that is perfect. Now we have the Gemini card, the lovers, which they have, they call true love here in the villains. Sally and Jack are the lovers about choice and union, values and romantic love. And this is the year of love, 2022. When you add all those numbers up, it is six. And the phone number of Max Dennison the lovers. 
Now we have the chariot, which is the cancer card. This is all about getting your tools to work with you, like Santa's, uh, well, Jack's sleigh with these um, reindeer skeletons. Her car. So we can work, work with our tools and have success. And in Hocus Pocus, we ha she totally reigns it in with the vacuum cleaner. And in the second Hocus po Pocus movie, she uses two Roombas. She kicks butt with her uh, makeup br her brooms. Strength card is the Leo card. We have the crocodiles. The guy with the axe in the head from Nightmare Before Christmas. This is all about internal strength. Calm, assertive energy. See, these these guys are not upset. They, they just... they. Very calm, feel very calm about what they're up to. Even their eyes are gleaming. Oh, and here we have the little sister for the strength card in Hocus Pocus. And she's like, my brother will kick your butt when these are the guys who stole his tennis shoes. She, has, she feels very secure with her brother. Oh, the Hermit, which is the Virgo card, which is my sign. And also, V, my friend V Love and Tarot and V Love and Crystals. Also, number nine is the Hermit card, and that is my life path number. And this is all about looking inside for answers, not going to your friends to get answers, spending some time by yourself. In Hocus Pocus, we have Billy Butcherson coming up from his grave. He spent a long time, and now he can share his wisdom with the kids. The Wheel of Fortune. This is your karma card. Upright, it's good karma. Upside down, it's reverse karma. Bad, you know. On the side, you, you're wishing to go up. On the bottom, you're wishing to go up. So we have a little skeleton tied up. And over here, we have Maleficent in the background with the spinning wheel from Sleeping in Beauty. And from Hocus Pocus, we have... Okay, I got myself confused for a moment. I can't tell who that is. Is that a doll? Oh, it's a cat with a wig and a hat on. And the book. on Inside the crystal ball. Boy, that had me confused. Justice card. Now, this is the Libra card. My mother is a Libra. And Jack is the justice of a Halloween. This is about truth, law, fairness. Let's see who is uh, justice over here. Oh, it's all three sisters. They were the law back then. They certainly had the power. The hangman, about getting a new perspective. And Santa Claus is definitely hanging there in Oogie Boogie's place, getting a new perspective of life. And self-sacrifice. In Hocus Pocus, here we got the two bad kids that stole Max Dennison's uh, tennis shoes. Ah, the death card is your Scorpio card. And uh, we have the cemetery here. And we have this character, it's Poseidon. He, he, I don't think it's Poseidon. He looks like he's got uh, octopus legs. Or maybe that's a wave. In Hocus Pocus, we have 
um, I think the cat's name was Billy, T no, Binks, Binks, the cat, Binks. Yes, transformation is a great name for this, you know, because, you know, whether you're dying physically, you transform to your spirit, or you're changing bad habits into good ones, or becoming, uh, going from a caterpillar to a chrysalis, then a butterfly. Picking from the wrong pile there. Temperance. Now, this is our Moderation and Sagittarius card. This is all about moderation and balance. The, the temperance is pouring in just right balance. Not giving in to temptation. In Hocus Pocus, we have uh, the love interest, Allison, here. She is Moderation and Temperance. Whereas Billy just rushed in to light that black flame. The devil, Oogie Boogie for Nightmare. And the devil for uh, the villains. The devil is your Capricorn card and all about vices, egotism, you know, vanity. And that you don't have to stay stuck in that. And here we got uh, Laverne's brother from Laverne and Shirley. Gary Marshall. Yes, Penny Marshall and Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall played the devil. The t uh, Tower. This is about, you know, fighting change. The li lightning is about the clarity you g learn but not showing it there. Upheaval and chaos in the Hocus Pocus house uh, card. It looks like the sister's house, the Sanderson sisters. Ah, the star, this is uh, the Aquarius card, which is Alice Cooper and Princess Fiona the Hippo from Cincinnati Zoo. This is all about hope and inspiration and spiritual healing. And here it is, the uh, sister from the past. Can't remember her. Binks was her brother. The moon is our Pisces card. All about hidden things not being scared by not being able to see things and not getting lulled in by things being dimmed and seeing things the way you want to. Don't let the dim light play tricks with your mind or your heart. And here we have Kathy and Jimmy in the Hocus Pocus. And is that her brew, her vacuum cleaner? I can't tell. We've got pumpkins. She's great with making the potions. She's great with her intuition. The sun, about bliss, feeling good. Victory, success. We got Jack Skellington. He's so excited by this Christmas town and this new idea of Christmas. We have this little lobster. And in Hocus Pocus, we have... Who for the sun? Oh, it's Bette Midler, Winifred. She Now she can't do the sun because that will kill her because she's only back for the night. Oh, judgment. Having to see things very clearly. Oh, and here we have the, the town's Trees, Valentine's Day Town, Halloween Town, Christmas Town, Easter Town. And we have the Queen of Hearts here from Alice in Wonderland. And here we have, I've got two cards. We have the Cemetery for Judgment. 
and the body's coming up. The world card. Now the world card is you have finished your journey. So it's time to sit back and look at all you have accomplished and appreciate it. Because you're going to start a new journey. A new cycle will begin very soon. So sit back for a moment and enjoy and appreciate all the work you have done. Let's see who it's here on the Hocus Pocus. Oh, it's the sister and Binks. But here he, the, his Binks is in a human instead of a cat. Ace of Cups. Our hearts are full. This is very much um, um, Pip, Pippish deck. Two there. I had more than two there. Here's the Hocus Pocus. The potion bottle has an eyeball in it. So for the Two of Cups, it means soon you'll be meeting someone new for romance, great friendship, or business partner. Here's the Hocus Pocus. Three of Cups. Here is your, your tribe. Who you cry with, who you celebrate with. Let's see. They have three potions for their cups. Winifred, Sarah, and Mary? I, I can't remember the sister's name. I just know her real name, Kathy Jimmy. Four of Cups. This is apathy. We got Captain Hook here. And bottles. Let's see what we have for Hocus Pocus. Just bottles. Thine own tongue, this bottle says. Five of Cups. This is your bereavement card. Usually it shows three cups spilt and two up. And the two up are telling you that there are still good things in your life. The Hocus Pocus. Oil of Bat for Billy. Batfoot. Hairs. Hair of Wolf, Spider Legs. Now the Six of, potion of Cups or Potions. So this is your Nostalgia card. Like running into an old ex or thinking about an ex. Dead Man's Toes. <laughs> I love that. It's fun to read the names of the potion bottles in the Hocus Pocus. Seven of Cups. This is about all these options that you have available to you. And some of them are just fantasy. Some are very practical. Some are spiritual. And it Here's the Hocus Pocus, Seven of Potions. Newt Saliva. Pox. I gotta see this closer. Lullaby something. This is the For Billy. Eight of Cups. This is about knowing the relationship is ended. That the, it's never going to get better. You both know this. And it's time to part and walk away. Let them go without any hard feelings. And here's the sister, Kathy Nijimi from Hocus Pocus. Holding all her potions. 
black something, frog's breath. Nine of cups. This is your wishes granted. And here we have Ursula the sea witch. And the potions here. So make a wish, make your wish. It's going to be granted. You're feeling good. Very much a card of contentment. Here's the Hocus Pocus from uh, Hocus Pocus. So here's the Pox, Fox Pox, Lucky Bat Tails, Oil of Bat, Newt Saliva. Dead man's toes, and that one has an eyeball in it. Ten of cups. Here is your happy family card. But you know, this is Halloween, so in Halloween town, you want a, a spooky family, you know? And in the villains, you want a villain family. So it's whatever your dream of a happy family is. And with the Hocus Pocus, it would be, of course, the sisters and their potions, all their tools. Next is the court cards, the page. This is your messenger card. So this is Hocus, uh, Captain Hocus, uh, right-hand man. Put these in the right piles. Oh, I think this is Binks. Is a human. Knight of Cups. This is your Prince Charming or Princess Charming. They are in love with love. They're coming to sweep you off your feet. And in Hocus Pocus, it's this jar. Maybe they conjuring up someone because it's the sister's hands also. The queen of uh, potions of cups is a woman very much ready for love, feeling f very loving. Okay, let's see who the queen is here. I think that's the teacher. In the Hocus Pocus. The King of Cups is Captain Hook. And Billy. Billy, uh, I can't remember his last name, name at the moment. And you learn more about Billy in the Hocus Pocus too. See that movie. I love it even more than the original. Ace of Coins are presents in the Nightmare Before Christmas. This is about you and the universe working with you to help you with whatever you want. Now, don't think coins and pentacles is just money or presents. Um, it's tangible things. It's your health. Material possessions. In Hocus Pocus, your ace of coins is a pumpkin. And look how happy that ace of pumpkins is. Two, this is about balancing and juggling all these things. You know, like getting up in the morning, exercising, having your breakfast, uh, brushing your teeth, having a shower, going to work or school, meditating, coming home and spending time with your family. Over here we have the pumpkins. They got to balance getting to all these houses to get the most pumpkin uh, candies. Four of coins are pentacles and pumpkins and presents. Is about hoarding or balancing. Oh, it's three. Sorry, three of coins and 
all of those suits. They're all pentacles. This is about collaboration, teamwork, apprenticeship. Here is the older pumpkin teaching. These older pumpkins are teaching this young one and working with them. Four of coins, pentacles, presents, pumpkins. Now this is about hoarding or learning to balance it and live more healthily. But, you know, you see those jewels, you want to hoard it all for yourself. And look at these awesome pumpkins. They balanced it out, got bats, moons, stars. Now we have the five of pentacles. Now fives are always conflict and tension. But this is a pentacle, so this is about feeling isolated, poor, ill health, and not looking to see what is available to help you. Not looking around. There's plenty of help around for these pumpkins and they're definitely not alone six of coins now this is all about giving and receiving on this card it looks like he's just doing the receiving having them on his vest And you're very happy that you can give when you get to that stage. And the receiver is very happy to receive. And in a relationship, there's always giving and taking. And it's not 50-50 because some areas you're better at something and your partner's better at something else. And you each have your weaknesses. So then, you know, it's 60-40 and then 60-40 the other way too for the other th when your partner's better at the something. So it's still very balanced. Seven of Pentacles. This is your not instant gratification card. This is about planting your seeds, watering them, weeding them, and taking them to market to get your um, money. Or, you know, like you're starting a new health regime, losing weight, getting muscle. It takes a long time to see those results come in. The hocus pocus. And to see all these happy pumpkins. It took a lot of time to gut them and carve them. Eight of pentacles. This is the mastery of your skill. See, here's Santa's elves making presents. The hyenas uh, helping Jack to make a Christmas are sneaking around in Hocus Pocus. The mastery of carving all these awesome pumpkins. Or actually the mastery of doing it with uh, witchcraft. Nine of Pentacles. This is your luxury card. See this beautiful like kingly robe. Taking a vacation from all your work. You've earned it. And these pumpkins on the Hocus Pocus are just hanging around in these lights with their friends enjoying the vacation. Ten of Coins. Now, this is your family legacy card. This could be about uh, trust funds, you're saving for retirement, um, gaining inheritance from a family member who's passed away. It could be also, remember, family legacy. The, the DNA, the genes that your parents have passed and your ancestors have passed on to you, really healthy ones or not so healthy ones. 
Also, it could be abuse of family, you know, coming from an abusive family, and you have cut the ties of that and have changed the cycle of your family legacy. Let's see the Hocus Pocus. All these happy punky pumpkins. They're a happy family. Their legacy, they've got their money. They've, they're very content. Page of coins. So we have this. It's a very youthful, young energy. Even if the person's old. So don't think, you know, just because someone's like 104 that they don't have this useful energy. They do. They're very excited to be starting their new career or regime. And going trick-or-treating. They're excited to get that candy. Hey, you know, old people get excited to dress up for Halloween too. Now our night. This is the slowest night in the deck. The Knight of Pentacles, Coins, Presents, and Pumpkins. This night, very much, this is also your Taurus. Pentacles are Tauruses, Virgos, and Capricorns. So, this night looks at all roads and chooses what's best for themselves and their family. You can always rely on them to choose well for you. They don't think just about themselves. Here we have the Queen of Pentacles. This is an incredibly nurturing card. This Queen, and just because it says Queen, don't take it as it has to be a woman. It can be a man. It can be anybody, any age. This Queen is all about loving to do homey things, you know, cooking cleaning, taking care of everybody, and taking care of themselves, pampering themselves. It's a very balanced, healthy person. The king of pentacles, someone who's great running businesses, coming up with businesses. The, think of the king not as a man, but as the Oldest or highest level of persons running the business. The president. CEOs. So next up we have the wands. Candles. Ace of wands, candles. I like to use them. Um, Business is a way to describe this. So here, it's about fire. The, the element is fire. We have a seed being planted in our brains. Of, and we have hope and inspiration for this. What we're, a business we're planning. We're dreaming it up here. And the seed has been planted in our brains. So in number two of wands... We are making plans and putting them into action. So now we've put this, these wands into action. We are looking out the window to see our ships coming in. But see, this is a pippish deck. But this is all about ships starting to come in for all the work we've put into plan is starting to show rewards so you've, you've gone out to see your ships and now you're coming back home so you got vampires you got Jafar and this candle coming back home to celebrate so you usually have four wands in a square to signify home you're coming home to celebrate, get engaged, get married. Five of Wands is your competition. 
competing for business. Whoever studied the most, worked towards us the most, will win. So we, here we have the Oogie Boogie's little minions, Schlock, Schlock, Barrel, and something. Six of Wands. Now home comes the Victor. The Victor is in town. Everybody is so proud of him, patting them on the back. And now the Seven of Wands, everybody's a little bit jealous and wants to take them down. Like, why didn't am I not that person? So you have to take one of your wands and draw a line in the sand and say, Hey, I worked for this. This is mine. Don't cross my boundaries. Go work for your thing. Eight of Wands. Now this Eight of Wands is a very fast moving card. It's fast uh, answers coming, uh, air travel. Nine of Wands, here you've been working very hard. You're getting towards the end and it's telling you to conserve your energy you, you still have plenty of energy to get through everything you need to. But it's always wise to conserve your energy. In the Ten of Wands, here you are taking on every single thing at once. And you really needed to conserve this energy, hand off things to your family to help with around the house and at work, the easier things, you know. Get the important things done. Page of Wands. Now remember, the page is a very youthful energy. We have the sister, Max's sister here. And also, think of wands as sex, passion, lust. So this page is very lustful coming into their lust. Gets excited very fast. Think of it, you know, first time going to bed or just kissing and a guy having an orgasm in his pants. Now, the Knight of Wands is an incredibly, just because it's Knight, don't think man, be a woman. Anybody, any age. They usually generate around 30, but you cannot confine these energies, these people and personalities. This person is very charming. They will charm you out of your panties, your pants. They just make you feel so good. And the queen is the bell of the ball. Very socially vibrant butterfly. Dancing like Madonna over here, voguing. We got the queen from Snow White and her as the old hag giving that apple. This cat. The king of wands. Now, the King of Wands is older, and don't restrict this to se sexual, gender, orientation, or anything. But they're older person that is incredibly charismatic, and just, you feel so good to be around them. This is the person you want to be. It's also, they're a rock star, the absolute rock star. That's how charismatic they are. So we have Voodoo Daddy here, Jafar, and Jack the Pumpkin King. Oh, the needles. Ace of Needles. A new way of seeing things, of learning, communicating. Enlightenment. 
Now, wands and swords are air, the element of air. All about knowledge and communication. So here for the two, this is your indecisive card. Sally is indecisive about, you know, making this suit for Jack. She doesn't think it's a good idea. And she happens to be right. Three of Swords is very much heartbreak. But remember, this is early in the numerology of the suit. Three. Ten is the end of the suit. So even though you're feeling hurt, maybe it's the end of a relationship, maybe it's not. The thing that's worse about this pain is that it weighs heavily in your mind. That is the bad thing, you know. See here, she's looking at a book to help ease the pain. Where you just have to feel it and then focus on something else. Four of Swords. I think I've got two here. Yes, I do. Four of Swords is your rest and recuperating. Here's Max. He's going to need some rest and recuperation from all those the sisters zapping him. Scar. Five, remember, conflict and tension. All five is conflict and tension. So here is a serious argument between Jack and Oogie Boogie. The cat, I know, the this cat, which story? The Binks over here. It's such a horrible fight. You fight, one person is fighting very dirty can hurt the friendship so badly that it never recuperates. So you should really think about it before you get into that. Do you really want to end the friendship? Or, you know, business partnership, whatever it is. It's her cat, the stepmother's cat. Six of Swords. Now, I love the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is about leaving this troubled waters, troubled relationships behind and moving on to smooth relationships, smooth water. For her, leaving that doctor and being with Jack. And for this mother getting kicked out of that house. She should not be Cinderella's house. Seven of Swords. This is all about stealing, deceit, strategy, stealthiness. Like here the sisters are trying to force their foot into this shoe. These needles are supposed to be the swords. These electrical things are supposed to be the swords. It's also, think of, you know, like, stealthiness. You, you've got to plan a strategy. Even though it's deceit, it's deceitful, but you want to win, you know? No one wants to lose a war. Also, you know, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist who abuses you, you cannot tell them you're leaving them. You have to just leave them and let them figure it out. Because they are the kind of person who will not let you leave. They will kill you. Eight of Swords. This is where you feel like you're trapped. But you're not trapped. You're trapped in your mind. So you need to relax. Meditate. Here she sewed herself back up, putting herself back together, calming down to get yourself out of the situation. Because you are not physically restrained, even though it looks like it, this lightning's getting you. It's really all in your mind. Nine and Swords is your 
nightmares, anxiety, can even be depression. Ten of Swords is the end of the cycle, and it's about backstabbing and betrayal. And what comes from it is that you have learned where your boundaries are and like, I am done with the, these people. I'm moving on. You'll never go through that again. And then the page of swords is a young person. Excited by learning or learning something or communicating. Now this night of the swords is the fastest night in the deck. The policeman or the guy who was pretending to be a policeman. I don't know this movie. This devil. So this night, they know their skill. So they just rush in and take care of business. Whoops. The queen. She is fierce. The queen. Queen of Swords is incredibly fierce, a great friend, incredibly smart, the doctor's new woman, Cinderella's stepmother. I would not consider her the queen. No way in no how. Cinderella. Here's Penny Marshall, the devil's wife in the movie. Incredibly quick-witted and intelligent. And people like to think of her as cold bitch, but she's not. She's incredibly intelligent. And if she doesn't feel like smiling, she doesn't. There's nothing wrong with just being. So the king of swords is this incredibly intelligent person, older, great at communicating, knowing what to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed these Halloween decks. I will have more for you next week, too. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And take care of yourselves and your family. And I'm sending you lots of love and many blessings and kisses. Take care, everybody. Bye.